Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. And as you can tell, we have a very, very special guest indeed. We are joined by actor and stuntman and stunt director, Ken Kerzinger. Ken, how are you today? I'm very good. Very, very nice to see you across the yes. pond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so how, how have you how have you been? How's life been treating you this year? It's been good. I mean, you know, coming off COVID and things starting to feel normal, people traveling again, um, yeah. you know, besides all the other things that are going on in the world, uh, mm -hmm. life's been good here in Vancouver. That's brilliant. Fantastic to hear. It's, it's really nice to finally start to hear uh, like really positive things about, you know, obviously coming out of COVID and it's really nice for people to have sort of some positivity back and feel like life's getting back to normal a little bit, at least. Yes. Um, so as, as I mentioned, um, you are a notoriously known stuntman, stunt director and actor. Um, you know, you've been in some of my some of my all time favorite movies. Um, so it's been it's going to be an absolute pleasure to get to hear some of the stories you may have. Um, one of the first things I really wanted to ask you is how or what inspired you to get into sort of stunt work? Um. When I was a kid, I read an article about Hal Needham. Hal Needham was a very famous stuntman. Is actually uh, the character Brad Pitt was based on in uh, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, I read an article about him when I was like 12 years old and it just stuck with me. Um, I always loved uh, film and television. I loved watching it. I, I was excited by it and, uh, and I was always you know, athletic. And I thought, oh, you know, that's something I, I might be interested in uh, as I get older. And so I always had that tucked away in the back of my head. And unfortunately, I uh, was in playing college football and I blew my knee out and uh, was, I had hoped to go uh, pro. Uh, but uh, uh, I ended up getting into stunt work instead. I, after I after my knee injury, I started looking into it and uh, things just fell together. My sister was living in Los Angeles with her family at the time. And I went down to visit her to specifically look into getting into stunt work. Turns out her next door neighbor was the property master on an old stunt show called Fall Guy. <laughs> and uh, so he hooked me up with uh, one of the stunt guys from that show. And uh, they hooked me up with one of the, the uh, stunt guys in Vancouver which is very young at the time. I mean, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anybody making a full-time living at stunts when I, when I got in the business in Vancouver. Um, but uh, so I really got in at the ground level of it uh, here in Vancouver and, and the rest has been a, a wild and wacky uh, uh, adventure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as I said, I've, I've been sort of looking through your, your IMDB page uh, for your credits. And, you know, I, I don't think you get the credit you deserve when you see that list of the movies that you've been in, especially when you're sort of talking the DC side of things with X-Men. I think you've done three X-Men movies, I believe. I, I stopped counting, but yeah, that's a good thing. And then Superman 3, of course, which, again, I, st I still think to this day is, is one of my favourite movies. I love Superman 3. Um, and then you also kind of, I would, if, forgive me if, if, if you think differently, but I think you're primarily known for playing uh, Jason Voorhees in Freddy vs. Jason, um, as well as your work on uh, Friday the 13th, part eight. Um, so when you were growing up, what, what was your, did you have a specific genre you preferred or, you know, or were you kind of like, you kind of liked everything? What was your particular favorites? When I was a kid, I used to love to stay up late and watch, you know, the, the late night horror uh, programs like Thriller, Chiller Theater, or, you know, whatever was on at the time. And I remember my parents sort of went religiously to bed at, at 11 o'clock. And uh, I would sneak out of bed on a Friday night when I was very young, and I would turn the TV on down low. And, uh, you know, so they couldn't hear it. And I would watch these uh, old horror movies and science fiction movies. And uh, uh, so I really liked, I guess, the imagination of uh, involved in making uh, horror and sci-fi. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, so when it comes to stunt work in particular, um, you know, it's very, it's very rare that we sort of people from like myself who's so out of the loop when it comes to stunt work. I don't think it's something that 
for me personally, I don't think it's something that's spoken a lot about. I mean, the the risks you you guys take um, for movies is is insane. It's probably one of the most, I'd say, probably the most dangerous sort of type of work in in Hollywood. Um, uh, could you kind of give us a story, sort of about, you know, uh, sort of what you know, especially when you were starting, what was sort of an average day like, or you know, how did you have to prepare to do stunt work? Um, you buy every stunt pad you can find and, <laughs> and all the equipment. Uh, so I have a stunt bag uh, that, uh, that is about as big as a small person. And I have that full of everything I would need to do mountain climbing, fire gags, car gags, all kinds of uh, padding for stair falls, uh, you know, pads that hide well, pads you don't, you know, that I, I had everything in that bag and I uh, would take that to work with me. And uh, when Vancouver got really busy, I remember working on uh, two or three shows in one day because we had so much going on and the stunt community was so small. And because I was a big guy, it was easy to get, you know, small parts as the thug or, you know, henchman number one and, and stuff like that. So um to prepare for being a stuntman, uh, we had a lot of American stuntmen coming up to Vancouver and filming uh, because we just didn't have, you know, it was the way it had been established. We didn't have a real stunt community in Vancouver uh, early on. And uh, so American stuntmen would come up and uh, if we were lucky, we'd get to work with them and uh, basically apprentice. Um, but I, I mean, uh, I, I can tell you a funny story about how I, my first stunt driving lesson uh, uh, I was working on a movie called Glitter Dome. I was actually working as a stand-in for John Lithgow. Uh, um, and, uh, oh, uh, shorting on the names here, but um, the stand-in uh, for, oh, sorry, James Gardner was on the show and uh, his stand-in was uh, Louis Delgado. They'd been friends since high school. Louis had learned to drive at the same time that, that, uh, that uh, he had learned. His, uh, his buddy, uh, uh, um, James Garner. So I let him know that I wanted to be a stuntman. He goes, well, you get a place and you get a car and, uh, and I'll teach you a little bit about stunt driving. And being very ambitious, I, uh, we were filming in, on Vancouver Island and this was way before 9-11 or anything. I, so I went to the airport and I actually lied to the airport guy, uh, the manager. And I said, listen, I, I'm the stunt coordinator on this movie. And uh, we're I want to rehearse for a car stunt. Uh, could we use the end of one of your runways? <laughs> the guy said, yes. So I, uh, I, I, I went to a car rental company that I will not name and, uh, uh, and got a car. And I called Louis Delgado up and I said, Louis, I got a car and I got a place. And uh, so we went out early one Sunday morning. And he taught me, uh, you know, how to the basics of how to slide a car. And after that, I bought a uh, ex police car and found other places to uh, to practice sliding it stuff like that and so in that respect I was you know quite a bit you know I had to learn a lot on my own but uh, you know slowly it was something I really loved to do so I kind of developed a reputation as a, as a driver and, and uh, got a lot of driving jobs because of it I don't recommend anybody do that that was really stupid and <laughs> foolish and, and uh, you know but uh, you know I, I was young and ambitious, and, and uh, it, it did the wrong it did the wrong thing. And luckily, it didn't bite me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, when when you were, uh, I would say, sort of maybe throughout your career, obviously, you just mentioned about you're primarily known for driving, stunt driving. Um, but were you? Would you say uh, you had to to be in stunt work? You had to be, or maybe even still to this day, do you have to be quite well rounded to cover anything, or do you have specific? Uh, niches that you may cover um, particularly? It, as, as the industry's grown, it's uh, become more specialized. When I was working, when I got started, you wanted to do, be able to do as many things as possible. That, that kept you working. Yeah. And uh, I love that aspect of the business because one morning I'm going to crash a car, the next morning I'm going to do a fire gag, the next morning I'm going to do, you know, God knows what. But I love that you know, I got my stunt bag beside me, I'm going to work and I'll, I can do whatever they want me to do kind of thing. Um, and these days, uh, people tend to specialize more in uh, whatever their, you know, martial arts fighting or uh, 
uh, car stunts uh, tend to be more specialized these days and, and rightly show so uh, you know people you want to get the best person for the job and an all-rounder an all-rounder stunt guy might you know driving might not be his forte and but he might be really good at something else but you know you're going to hire the best fire guy you can find uh, the best car guy you can find these days and and when pe people specialize they just tend to be better yeah absolutely um so throughout your career you know i i i I can imagine you've probably done a lot of crazy things, you know, that some people probably haven't even, even considered doing. Um, is there any particular stunt or maybe even a, a movie in particular that really sticks out in your head of, of doing where you thought, you know, it was either really challenging or it was tough or do you have anything in particular? Um, I, I remember, uh, you know, stunts that go wrong are the most dangerous thing on a film set you're not planning to get anybody hurt you're not planning to break bones you're not planning so but you're pushing that fine line where you know bumps and bruises and uh, sprains and broken bones are quite possible and uh um you know the uh, I, when you mention that it just brings me back to the closest i ever came to being killed on a film set was uh doing a car chase sequence on the side of a mountain and uh my car went off the mountain upside down and, and oh uh, my god uh, it was very fortunate that i wasn't uh, that i wasn't killed doing that and uh but i came back the next day with a fractured elbow and and uh you know finished the uh, finished the car chase <laughs> um and uh, so i mean that sticks out to me um i remember the only stunt i ever turned down was uh i have a very good friend Brad Lurie who played one of the Michael Myers as well and Brad yes. and I have known each other since you know he got in the business and stuff like that and a uh, stunt coordinator called me up to do a uh, high fall through a window from about 30 40 feet uh, out of this building and uh, so I said sure uh, let's go out and look at the location and and uh, so I go out to look at the location and um, it wasn't just going out the window, it was clearing a balcony, a concrete balcony that was uh, two stories below. And uh, I think it was like, I wanna say between 10 and 15 feet wide. Uh, and at the time I had, I, uh, my knee, I needed surgery on my knee really. Uh, I had a torn uh, cruciate ligament. And, uh, uh, so my knee it wasn't in great shape. So. I paced out the distance on the grass on the building to see if I could clear the distance and I, and I wasn't clearing it. And uh, so I called up my buddy, Brad, cause uh, uh, Brad is, was playing hockey at the time. I knew he had a good set of legs and, you know, if anybody could do it, you know, he could. So I called him up and I had him come out and I just told the stunt court there, I, I can't do it. You know, if I try, I'm going to kill myself. Uh, and, uh, so Brad ended up doing it and, um, he just barely cleared the, uh, the concrete railing. And, uh, if, if I had done, if I had tried it, you know, I, I, so it was embarrassing to turn it down, but I had a good reason. <laughs> I mean, as you said, I mean, it's something that clearly there's, you know, whether in your head or thought you could clear it or not, it's, um, you know, sometimes you have to make those decisions, right? Cause that's where, that's where the serious, serious, you know things can happen so you know obviously it's a good job you, you turned it down <laughs> um so you know i want to also I'd like to delve into um you know uh, mixed in a little bit with with your acting so as a, as a sort of mentioned in the intro you're pr again i would say primarily known for playing jason for he's in freddy versus jason right um so for yourself how did that role come out so that how did you get approached to play uh, Jason Voorhees? Um, I was interviewing for the stunt coordinating job on Freddy versus Jason. And the uh, uh, line producer who I was speaking to, he was kind of looking at me funny. He wasn't really listening to what I was saying. Uh, uh, I think he was impressed with the fact that I had worked on number eight. And, and uh, he yeah. finally said to me, he just sort of interrupted me and said, you know, would you be interested in auditioning for the role of Jason? And I was surprised, of course, because I thought, you know, what about Kane? And I actually said that. And uh, he goes, well, we want to go, uh, you know, a different direction. We want somebody more your build, which is funny because I had doubled Kane before, but uh, <laughs> I, am, I am a little bit bigger than him. Um, anyway, uh, so he asked me to audition and I did a taping 
and uh, they read the opening. The, the, the taping was a, a cheap Jason mask and a close up of my eyes where they read the uh, opening scene of the girl swimming in the lake and they just had me react with my eyes. And then they had me walk around the room and that was that was the audition <laughs> and uh, they sent that to Ronnie Yu. I had a meeting with him and, uh, and uh, he gave me the job. Amazing. So what so obviously prior, as you mentioned as well, Friday the 13th, part eight, um, that you were, you were heavily involved with as well. Um, were you a, a fan or did you watch any of the movies of the franchise prior to that? I, I had seen all the movies of the franchise. Uh, you know, watch them over the years as they came mm -hmm. out. And uh, when I got the call for that one, the original call actually was, hey, Ken, do you want to coordinate and play Jason? And uh, then the second call I got was, uh, they've made a deal with the guy that played in the last movie. Uh, um, so we just want you to coordinate and you can double him if you, if you want kind of thing. Um, so I almost played Jason twice. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I got to wear two different Jason costumes. I don't know what that counts for, but um, uh, I forget what now. I forget what your question was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's nice. I just wondered if you were sort of a fan of the franchise prior oh, to playing Jason. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had enjoyed it. Uh, uh, enjoyed all of them as they came out. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and I, because I was a fan of horror and sci-fi, so that's primarily what I watched. Brilliant. Um, well, so what was it like? Uh, because obviously, it's it's it's, I I would say probably the best uh, crossover movies we've had, especially in horror. I don't think there's anything quite like it, especially when you have Freddy Krueger versus Jason Voorhees. Um, do you remember sort of what? what the buzz was like um, during the, the announcement of the movie, as well as maybe once the movie had sort of uh, aired to the public? You know, I, and I say this with all humility, I did not know what a big deal it was to play Jason. And uh, I, even, at, even though I had been involved, uh, you know, as the stunt coordinator, the stunt double and the fry cook in number eight, I still didn't know how big it was. Uh, even after we started shooting, I didn't know how big it was. And then I started having family members, have you looked on the internet? Do you see what a big deal this is? And uh, I got great. And then uh, what really kicked it off for me, though, was um, Robert and I did, uh, we were in San Diego, I think, doing an interview at a radio station. And we came out and there was about 15 people outside waiting for us to come out because uh, they were so excited about Freddie versus Jason. And I turned to Robert right then and there and I go, you know, I, this is a big deal. I go, wouldn't it be cool if it was like number one in the, you know, in, in the box office for its first weekend. And lo and behold, it was number one for two weekends and, and uh, it did, of course, very well. So that's when I really knew that it was a big deal. Of course. And I mean, it must even be crazy to think even now to this day, there's still such a diehard fan base begging for a second one. <laughs> it, you know what? It's almost bigger now than it ever than it ever has been um the fan base is generational um you've got little kids to you know people in their 70s and 80s uh that enjoyed that movie and uh are waiting for the for, waiting for the next one and uh it's going to be interesting because i think one day they may end up getting around to doing it once they settle all the legal issues involved and stuff it would be a shame if they didn't do another one um and uh so we'll we'll see what happens with that, but uh, it'd be nice to see another one get done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so whilst filming uh, on Freddy versus Jason, uh, what was it kind of like behind the scenes? Was it quite a strict and serious set, or were there quite a lot of jokes? Or how how was it to to film? Uh, so, well, for me, quite a big production. Um, it, it it was a you know uh, I think the budget was around. 14, 15 million dollars for, for that uh, movie. Um, and the atmosphere on set was, um, I wouldn't say it was super jovial. People were there to work. Um, and it was long hours and late nights. And, um, um, you know, the, the, the uh, I, I, I want to call them kids. None of, none, of the, none of the other actors were really kids at the time, but but uh, I guess they were to me, but, you know, they were all very serious about their roles and, and uh, taking their parts mm -hmm. very seriously. So um, it was, it was a hard, and Ronnie, Yu is a, uh, you know, he, he's not a comedian. He's yeah. there to do work. 
and uh, very specific goal in mind and, and really great to work with that way and that he knows exactly what he wants. Um, so it was a, it was a, I don't want to say it was an all business set, but, but, uh, it was, everybody took things pretty seriously. Yeah. And to be honest, I think that shows, cause I think, you know, the movie is still, uh, regardless of whether, you know, they make a second one or not, uh, you know, every time there's a horror event or there's a convention or anything related to horror, you know, Freddy versus Jason is is always so heavily talked about. So I think that kind of shows in the work that the, the movie, even to this day, still, you know, is still so beloved by so many people. Well, and next year is the uh, the twentieth anniversary. Uh, wow, so, I, I, I didn't. Yeah, actually, did yeah, I, yeah as you mentioned I, it, yeah. I've uh, talked to a few people who you know they want to they want to you know celebrate that, and uh, you know I think that's fantastic. Uh, you have to for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly brilliant um so i wanted to kind of loosely talk about um so if you're so like your career now so you know have you got any projects happening now or uh, have you got any goals you want to achieve now or anything well, happening? I've, so i've retired from stunt work uh, mm -hmm. i'm not doing that anymore uh, i'm auditioning for projects uh i've been approached about three different projects this year um, about doing them, uh, we'll see what happens with, you know, financing, you know, until you're shooting, you can't really say much about it. Uh, yeah. but, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, if something comes along, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. And if it doesn't, I'm, I'm writing scripts. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, enjoying sort of retired life. You know, when you work in the film business, you work 12, 16, 20 hour days. So a 30 year career, you know, in the film business is like a, you know, 50 year career, uh, yeah. any place else. Um, so, uh, I still love the business and, uh, still want to be involved with it and, and, uh, and, and want to be, uh, I guess, access my creative side with it where as a stunt coordinator, you know, they, you're, you're basically, okay, this is what's in the script, uh, make it, make it happen. And, uh, that's your job is to, is to create the director's vision. Uh, make that happen and uh, um, but it's nice it would be it's nice to be involved on the creative aspect of it you know uh, uh, developing the sequences the action sequences and and uh, you know adding to the characters and stuff like that so that I think that's what kind of turns me on about the business now yeah absolutely that's something I actually wanted to ask you about if maybe going into script writing or directing was something that kind of takes your fancy a little bit now yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I'd be uh, I, I, I'm very much interested in acting, uh, as I say, but the whole creative the process as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. starting from a blank page and creating something and seeing it get made, I think is something that uh, I'm definitely trying to make the right decisions to head in that direction. Yeah. Um, so, again, I, so I've asked you, asked you a couple of um so sort of maybe Joval questions really um so is there a, a tv show or a movie that maybe you wish you had uh, been a part of or maybe would like to it, potentially in the future you know i i love uh what they're doing with yellowstone and uh even more with what they i think it's 1888 the the yeah. sort of prequel series uh, i i love westerns it's been a long time since i've since I've done one, I think the, the one I did uh, Gunsmoke returned to Dodge with, uh, you know, the whole Matt Dillon thing. And, and uh, I got to play a character on that and, you know, um, being on horseback, you know, wearing, wearing your gun and doing shootouts and fight scenes. And uh, I, I really, I really do love it. And so, yeah, um, and I, I believe it's 1888. I, I mean, I'd love to work on something like yeah. that. Um so uh, I know you sort of touched on it um, loosely, but about who inspired you to get into stunt work, but as your career's progressed, have you kind of been inspired by other people, whether it's directors, actors, fellow stuntmen? You know, uh, the, there are people out there who uh, have made that next step up the ladder, you know, that there's stuff in, and forgive my, uh, my blanking on the name, but uh, the director of Deadpool, um, 
too. The last one was a, is a, yeah. was a stunt guy turned director. He's just done such a fantastic job in, in uh, you know, moving out of stunts and into directing. And uh, I know a couple other people that have done that. And uh, it's nice to see the industry because the industry always wants to pigeonhole you, you know, oh, he's a stunt guy. He can't act. Oh, he, you know, he can act, but he can't be a stunt coordinator if he's going to act. I mean, you know, people want to pigeonhole you into those uh, spots. And so I, I'm inspired by by people who uh, have moved on because, you know, that's what I want to do. So uh, that's always inspirational to see people having success and, and uh, seeing what great work they're doing. Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned about being sort of categorized in just as, as a particular person um, within the industry, would you say now it's easier or worse to delve into other things than it maybe was when you first started? Um, I, well, I think it's, it's getting easier. You know, I, I think these other, other people that are, that are sort of taking that next step up the ladder uh, um, are opening people's minds. So I, I think it's easier now, uh, although it's still a struggle. Um, yeah. But um, I think people are more open-minded. Yeah, for sure. And I hope, I'm really hoping that it, it sort of, that, that, that mentality kind of expands a bit more. Because, I mean, you, you could have such talent that maybe could be undiscovered you know, if, if people get pigeonholed into just a particular market. So I really hope that people can kind of open up and, and do more. Um, yeah. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I um, mean, I see, I see producers working on movies and, and, you know, they have a, they have a couple credits. And so they're not, there's things that they're lacking as far as the practical end of filmmaking goes. Yeah. Um, and so that really does, when you have people that have been on set and making movies for, decades uh you know there's there's something to offer there and the just the practical end of filmmaking because really money decides makes a lot of decisions in the business you know i i, I want a castle well we can't afford a castle you know uh, so you're you know you're going to be here kind of thing and uh to be able you know filmmaking is problem solving so if you have people with experience in practical filmmaking uh it, it goes a long way to helping to solve those problems that come up Absolutely brilliant. Um, so just a, just the last couple of questions, really. Um, this is going to be regarding uh, like comic conventions, because I know you attend some comic cons or mm -hmm. conventions, uh, whatever lingo people kind of use. Um, what's your general experience when you attend conventions and you get to meet fans face to face? Uh, it's always, uh, I guess, uh, I feel like I'm carrying a mantle, like because I know that Jason is the is the famous person here right you know Jason and so in a way I you know I represent you know the Jason I played plus all the other Jasons that have come before mm -hmm. and so when I meet the fans that they are you know they're meeting you know this aspect of Jason and um, yeah. I'm always conscious of that and and uh, that you know that this has been such a privilege to to be a part of um, and, and I was so fortunate. Uh, so I, I, I really appreciate uh, the fans and, and, and the new and the old. And it's always like, fun to see how excited they are about, you know, this movie that came out 20 years ago and they're talking about it like it, you know, like it happened yesterday and they're still so excited about it. And uh, that's exciting for me. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I know, I know a few years ago you attended a convention in London um i think maybe i think it's not just been as covid started maybe uh yeah somewhere back then you'll have <laughs> yeah yeah because i remember because I, I actually i actually had the opportunity to meet you then um and i, I did get a jason for his autograph so thank oh. you very much for that <laughs> you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. would you say is there a a difference uh how do i word this without being a, no, um so fans from america and canada um mm -hmm. would you say they're they're diff they approach you differently to maybe fans from maybe like the uk or germany or um are, where it would depend on where you go are fans different you know anytime you you have a, a great distance in between cities you're going to have different cultures and uh, so, so uh, some cultures are very uh 
you know, quiet and unassuming and some are louder and, and uh, more brash. And uh, so you're always going to run into that. No matter what you're doing, if you're going to go to a different city, it's going to be different. People, uh, you know, act, can act very differently. And, and, uh, so, and I find the greater the distance. And it's funny, too, because like uh, Jason seems to be very popular in like Germany and, and uh, uh, well, uh, the, the Western, Western uh, Europe and, and uh, the Eastern part of the United States. And uh, he's more popular in certain areas. So, uh, oh. you know, I don't know why that is, if the <laughs> that culture is more into horror, uh, but uh, it's interesting to see. That's actually very interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, I know... Uh, be, being involved in the horror community i know germany have a very big fan base for horror i think just generally um mm -hmm. but that's very interesting actually how different parts of different countries also could be could be a bit more diverse yeah. um do you have any conventions coming up or any events coming up or anything like that um i think i have one in uh, december uh in florida and i'm sorry i don't have the name of it handy but um I can find it. I'll link it down below so yeah. people can. I don't. I don't do that many conventions, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, they're always fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one last question, really, maybe for some viewers uh, watching or listening, um, whether they, you know, let's say they want to go into stunt work or they want to go into Hollywood, maybe in general. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice uh, that maybe you could give to people who are listening? Uh, just keep making those choices that take you in the direction you want to go. It, you know, it requires a certain amount of discipline and uh, you have to be cognizant of, of, of the choices you have and, and make, make the ones that take you in the direction of your goal. Um, you're gonna get beat down. You're gonna have moments where you wanna quit, where you don't think you're gonna make it. And uh, you just have to have the, the willpower and the courage to see yourself through that, those moments and, uh, and just keep going, keep taking those steps. Uh, you'll, you'll, if you keep doing that and you have the talent for or the job, uh, I, I, I really believe that you'll make it. That's fantastic. Uh, Ken, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to, to know your story and, and to get to speak to you. Very nice talking to you. <laughs> you have a great evening. I'll have a good morning. <laughs> yeah, you too. Enjoy, enjoy your day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care.